Welcome back to Capital Connection. Saudi Arabia's oil giant Aramco is stepping up efforts to promote initiatives in hydrogen to reduce carbon emissions. Aramco executives and industry partners held a full day of briefings on Sunday to discuss its future investment plans. I spoke with Aramco's chief technology officer, Ahmed al Kuwaita, who says the hydrogen market is now reaching an inflection point. So, you know, we've been working on hydrogen for a long time. Uh, we had research programs in the early 2000s. Uh, and really, this is not driven by us, really driven by the market. And we see that the maturity of the technology over the last few years has really tremendously improved. Uh, we have products out in the market today, uh, and we see a real market forming. Uh, so it's not really driven by us, it's driven by the market, and we're responding to that market. And so we're saying, you know, this is an opportunity for us to supply a new market, a growing market, and a really a sustainable market because it is a decarbonized energy product. So what are the hydrogen production techniques and technologies where Aramco can show leadership into the future? So of course the traditional SMR, steam methane reforming, takes natural gas uh, with heat and uh, mixes it with steam and produces hydrogen with a lot of CO2. Uh, so what we're doing right now is taking those conventional technologies and adding carbon capture sequestration and uh, pro uh, basically sequestering the CO2 to form what's called blue hydrogen. Now that's the, I would say, the conventional plus that was with CO2. Well, we are also developing membranes that will improve this process. So these are metallic membranes, ceramic membranes that can separate the hydrogen from the, uh, the hydrocarbon and therefore reduce the temperatures required and improve the efficiency. That's a te technology that's in the works as we speak, being scaled up. And we believe that will improve the efficiency and reduce the cost of hydrogen from hydrocarbons. We're also working together with other partners on what's called protonic membrane reforming. That's the next step. And that's really the next generation of technology which will allow uh, up to 90% conversion of hydrocarbons to hydrogen. Exciting technology, breakthrough technology. We're working with partners to get that to the market and that will allow even lower cost of hydrogen from oil and gas with simultaneous capture of CO2 and capture. That's the kind of technologies we think can really lower the cost of hydrogen. And once those technologies are scaled up, uh, hydrogen from hydrocarbons will be very competitive. So you have a growing market. It seems like Aramco has the technology. What are Aramco's investment plans when it comes to blue hydrogen and can you quantify it yet? So I always say, you know, the, uh, the hydrogen industry we believe is going to develop like the LNG industry did in the 60s and 70s. And the, the industry there basically started with no market. And so to start the market, we needed to have commercial agreements that kind of secured uh, the risk and allowed the investment, the commercial large investments needed with LNG. So LNG, as you know, uh, takes a lot of capital to convert the natural gas into liquefied natural gas. And then it takes dedicated capital to, to actually transport. You need to have shipping dedicated to LNG transport. So all of those investments along the LNG value chain can only happen after the secure, uh, securing of commercial agreements. And that's the, 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 the milestone that really you start counting the timeline from when availability. So once we have uh, the large scale demand uh, agreements agreed, and that's gonna take some time as we uh, explore the opportunities around the world, we're looking at that, those opportunities and we will then make those investment decisions. And of course, those investment decisions take several years uh, of capital investment and then uh, uh, construction and, and, and finally uh, uh, startup. So we're talking a, a five to seven year time frame before a large global world scale project could be on the ground running. 